Hello internet, internet. Big Dave here, and I am cheap. Sure. Hello internet, it's Big Dave here. Executive Big Dave, hi, overlord of the Frugal Mandate. And we are continuing our Stolaris series here on Big Dave is Cheap. So, as we said at the end of the last episode, a bunch of stuff was happening. Oh my goodness, it was just happening left and right. Things popping up here. Combat and research is completing. And man, it was a crazy one. But, you know, we have, uh, we've been settling into our, our new neighborhood here in the galaxy. And uh, we are about to do our first basic uh, diplomacy with our new neighbors, the Nation of Shantar, uh, with these birds that for some reason wear space helmets i i don't i don't understand you but we are fellow avians so on some level i i can relate i don't know i'm just trying to get this number up so i would say just about anything too uh so this isn't somebody that i'm going to really be messing with they're sort of equivalent in their force we saw their uh fleet that helped us destroy the mining uh platform in the last episode so they do have some power on their side we don't necessarily want to mess with them just yet we are not a military power by any means ourselves uh, but we do want to start to establish some uh, basic diplomacy with them so uh, we're not going to declare war uh, we're not uh, to a place yet where we can invite them to an alliance but you know we can we can work on that maybe uh, but we can establish an embassy which I think we'll do. Uh, you can only have three embassies at the same time, uh, but embassies are only there to help improve your relations, and I don't believe there's a penalty for removing an embassy. So, uh, you know, when we get an embassy, or when we get an ally up to, uh, you know, 100 or whatever, uh, we could just remove the embassy and move it somewhere else. So we have, uh, we have established our embassy. And uh, we do maybe want to consider trading, but before we trade, let's let's kind of let's see what these guys are all about. Uh, so they are uh, fanatic militarists. Okay. Oh my God. Okay. So at the end of the last episode, I think I I maybe I think I categorized these guys as perhaps being not something we had to worry about because uh, you know they seemed like they would leave us alone if we left them alone. But then I find out they are fanatic materialists, uh, uh, military militarists, military. They are fanatic militarists, and that means that uh, they can build a big old army and build it quick. And uh, some, they are still, they're not bigger than us militarily, so they're not doing a good job of being very fanatic. Uh, and they're also uh, materialists, so they are militarists and materialists. That must get confusing around the dinner table at home. They're also ruthless capitalists. Oh my god, ruthless capitalists are willing to go to any length to acquire more wealth and resources for themselves and for their empire. They tend to avoid even evenly matched fights, preferring to pounce on the weak and the helpless. Okay, so don't show weakness or these birds are going to uh, swoop in and try to take everything that I hold dear. Also, they are uh, fanatic uh, militarists and they got a butterfly on their symbol. Oh, you contradictions, you birds in a space helmet. You're so funny. All right, so yeah, let's see what these guys want to do. Uh, they, they will be pretty amicable here in, in a trade. Uh, they they don't undervalue our uh, our offerings. So uh, yeah, let's see if we can just go oh, oh, star charts four, which is good, and star charts two. All right, so yeah, so we could do a nice trade here with these guys, no problem. Uh, I think that would be... Uh, That'd be nice. How about a non-aggressive track back, maybe? Non-aggression? No? No? Yeah? No? Yeah. They're wary of us, so they're not willing to... Uh, they're saying, hang on, that's a bridge too far, buddy, all right? We don't know if we can uh, take you over by force yet, so let's just share star charts, and maybe we'll talk again later. Uh, yeah, so I, I don't want to give them anything. I don't want to ask them for anything. Uh, border access may be out of the question at this point. I'm definitely not going to give them a system. <laughs> um... Yeah, so I, th I think we're good. I think we're good here. Just a, s a simple, basic trade of star charts. And there we go. And we've learned a little bit more about space. Not a whole lot. I think they probably got the better end of that deal by learning about a whole other alien race. Uh, but you can see we've learned about this bit of space here. And so now we kind of know a little bit more about a little bit more. Yep, so they have... A, that's just a redundant message telling us they have accepted our star charts. Okay, so, okay, helpful, helpful reminder here in the notification bar. There is a timed project, but I do believe we already have one of our science ships on that. We do, yes, yes, okay. Yes. There we go. Sometimes you have to refresh the old memory. Okay. 
So, yeah, speaking of refresh the old memory, uh, everybody remember where we're at? Yeah, we're just kind of in this weird mid-expansion thing. And yeah, okay. So, uh, Gal, what do you got going on over here, Gal? Uh, all right, so we have naval capacity. That's nice. Right now we're good at 6 of 14, but we are going to want to grow that. Uh, you can grow that through conventional means. I think uh, more colonies, more spaceports uh, will all start to grow that. Uh, exceeding your naval capacity. Okay. Uh, more pop uh, base. Okay. Base is five, three from pops, six from spaceport. So yeah. So expand the uh, population of your uh, empire and also uh, build more spaceports. And you too can have an armada at your fingertips. Uh, planetary unification, monthly influence plus one. That would be nice because we are currently losing one to our frontier outpost up here. And propaganda Great. broadcasts. Okay, propaganda broadcast would just give us uh, the ability to create an edict on a planet, which would just make everybody happier. That's pretty pretty cool. So edicts are basically ways of trading influence for temporary bonuses or buffs. You can do them in a planet uh, by planet basis, and you can also do them in your entire empire. So they can be super cool. All right, genome mapping plus 10% food and plus 10 years life expectancy to leaders. Leaders are really valuable. They're really valuable. And uh, having them around for an additional 10 years could be, man, it could be amazing, actually. I'm kind of caught here because this was the no-brainer for me, plus one influence. Influence caps out at 1,000. I gotta go. I've got to go with influence because I need to build up a big surplus of influence. Yeah. Oh, Gao alone, plus 25. Okay, so Gao's going to be around for a while. I like that. I like that. All right, so debris has been analyzed. Mining drone lasers, plus 10% progress. Nano composite materials, another 10% onto that. Fusion power, plus 10%. I think we actually have fusion power in progress right now. And also uh, physics and engineering research. Didn't we have... Fusion power. Did we get an additional? I can't tell if we got a bump on that or not. Yeah, can't tell. Okay. I've got another leader. Kofi! Oh, it's Kofi. All right, Kofi has, uh, has leveled up. Nice. Okay, perfect. That'll do. And our science ship continues to analyze debris. Construction ship is a bit bored because there's not much he can do right now. Uh, remember, our construction ship can only build within our green borders. Cannot build into these expanses of space, which we have explored. And still, you are not yet in our... I want you in my territory. Oh, but we do actually have some stuff here for him to do. Oh my goodness, how did I miss this? How did I miss this? Build that, and also build that. Uh, so doing that from this uh, perspective, from the galaxy map, uh, actually allows you to um, tell him to just build everything. Build all the mining stations you can build. Build all the research stations you can build. Uh, so that actually allows uh, for uh, big sweeping action to happen in a, a, a more concise way, let's say. Maybe concise is the right word for it, but uh, it's less clicks. Less clicks. I like less clicks. All right, now survey that system. While you're there, how about you survey that system for me? All right, the first strike force is... Uh, are they home? All right, return. They're going to return home. And we are going to continue to expand the first strike force. System survey complete. Yes, let us expand the first strike force. Two more. That'll get us up to eight ships total. And that, I think, is a is a pretty good place to be. All right, so before we uh, take a look at our new contact, uh, we can see uh, more analyze, uh, more uh, debris analyzed, and we have uh, improved our red lasers and physics research in the bucket there. Uh, all right, I think, you know, that was uh, well worth it. It really worked out nicely, uh, destroying that ship and swooping in there before the Shantar could uh, survey that, that uh, debris. All right, we got a communique from a previously unknown space-bearing empire that called themselves the Democratic Baldari Union. Will you sound familiar? Uh, if you missed the first episode, that is actually the main faction that I play in my main game 
of uh, Stellaris, the, my offline game, so to speak, of Stellaris. So uh, it, nice to, to meet a familiar face here. Uh, they claim they've learned of our existence by listening in on communications with, uh, with another empire. That's cool. And there they are, the majestic space bats in all their glory. Greetings from the Democratic Union of uh, the Democratic Valdar Union. We are a democratic nation committed to upholding the individual freedoms of our citizens, regardless of their species. Our elected leader, President Taglaro, sure, that works, hopes for a long and fruitful relationship with your people. Our citizens all send their regards. Research. And let's see how that uh, has an effect on our galaxy map. Oh, okay, they're way over here. Okay. So yeah, so they must have learned about us by monitoring the Shantars, okay? Cool though, we've we've learned even more about these neighbors. We know an awful lot about them and their planetoids because probably because of the trading we did with the Shantars on space maps, star charts. Sure, whatever. So if we ever wanted to come in and forcefully take them over, we can see uh, that they have some uh, mineral and research-rich planets here. Uh, a much better start for these guys than I got. Look at this. Look at that. They have this, like, this is probably their starting circle here, right? Look at all the planets they had in their starting circle, right? This was my starting circle here, right? Oh, no, I had I had, Vol I had Fuldara in there. That was my starting circle right there. No good. No good. No good. All right. Enough complaining about that. Let's get back to the business of running an empire, shall we? Okay, so where are we at? Okay, research complete. It's coming fast and furious now. All right, so that is going to uh, call for a redesign of our Corvettes and an upgrade to our fleet. And now we are going to put uh, new research in motion. Kofi, hey, congratulations on uh, your level up, Kofi, if I didn't mention that before. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Horst Bauman has found an anomaly. It is a level four anomaly. Horst uh, currently only level two, so he is not going to be able to tackle this one. Uh, how would our uh, national treasure, Paseca, fare? Pretty well, 20%. That's just a tough anomaly. Goodness, that is just, that's just a tough anomaly. Hmm. All right, well, um, let's leave that just for the moment. We'll just kind of ignore it. Pretend it didn't happen. Mark it on the star charts, and we'll come back to it later. So let's see what we can ask Kofi to research for us here. Uh, we can get assist research so that uh, two ships can kind of put their, uh, put their, um, oh no, that's not, yeah, allows our science ship to assist with the research of a colony. Cool. So yeah, so uh, for each scientist, uh, science level, uh, okay, yeah, so it can actually help. That's nice. That's nice. Assist research is nice. Physics output increases, society output increases, engineering output increases. That's nice. Uh, and that would give me something to do with idle science ships uh, later on in the game. Uh, unfortunately, I don't really have idle science ships, as he says, and then immediately sees that he has an, an idle science ship. Uh, but but that is something definitely for later in the game. Uh, wormhole calibration matrix, uh, wormhole generation rate 25%, so wormholes would form up faster and our range would increase by 50%. Oh man, now that actually is pretty good uh, because we do have a whole lot that we would include. If we increased our range by 50%, we have a lot of space, a lot of systems that would come into our reach with that. Oh my goodness. Okay, research alternatives plus one. So that would be nice. I'd get four instead of three. That would be really nice. Really nice. Okay. And our red lasers, remember we got a little bit of uh, we got a little bit of red laser research from one of the debris that we uh, that we researched. So our red lasers are uh, 76 out of 259 already. And then uh, mining drone lasers. We got a little bit uh, out of that too, so we're doing pretty well with those. 8 to 14 damage on a small mining laser. 5 to 10 on a small red laser. Hmm. Interesting, interesting. Uh, I do think that I have to go. I absolutely have to go with wormhole generation rate. I, I just don't feel that I have a choice. And that is in the field of specialty of Kofi, so he is actually going to increase the speed on that. Uh, by quite a lot, so that's that's really nice. So you can see his uh, his administrative AI is going to give him plus five percent. He is going to contribute to that uh, sixteen percent. So that is just on top of the base nine percent. So yeah, love it, Kofi. You're you're a superstar. You're not as good as Paseca. Let's not get crazy here, but you're you're a superstar. 
Okay, so we have surveys that need to be done. We have found enemies in these systems. So let's just avoid them to start. And let's start surveying some systems. I think we're good to go there. That looks good. Okay. And they are also researching, potentially thinking about an expansion here. Uh, that could hurt me if they expanded here. They would really be able to hem me in uh, if they were to, to start really expanding in this direction. We do have a habitable planet out here. I don't think I noticed that before. That is huge. That is huge. I'm lost in thought about how huge that is. That is huge. So if I could expand out here at the very edge of my wormhole capacity, that could create a four, a, a, a fort. I was going to say a fort, but what I meant to say is a dam to stem the flow of the Shantar into this part of space, and it would potentially give me a way out. That is huge. All right. Colony ship. Let's make a colony ship. So we'll queue a colony ship up behind this, uh, these two uh, Corvettes. And now we get to see kind of an interesting aspect of the uh, colony system. We saw a little bit of this before, but we didn't have nearly as much variance as we have now uh, in these guys. So uh, let's see. So these guys are thrifty, all right? So they are also sedentary, right? They are also uh, repugnant. So yeah, they do. They are industrious, so 15% minerals, and uh, they prefer arid climates. And also, these guys are individualists and fanatic materialists. These guys share all the same base traits, but are only fanatic materialists. So this can kind of start to shape uh, the differences in the people who are on Ricks versus the people who are on uh, Smithis, uh, Smithius versus the people who are on whatever the planet is that we would colonize down here. Uh, and it, it can create an interesting dynamic within your within your empire. So I'm going to send those guys down, and, and we're going to see. We're going to build a colony ship, and uh, we are going to send them down there to populate, and we're going to see how our little social experiment works itself out. So let's unpause so that things can start to move. And we will watch as our science ship starts its work, as our colony ship slowly but surely is built, and as our empire continues to expand. Oh my goodness. Okay, so this is a good time, because we haven't done this very much, to stop and check in on Rix. Look at the surface and see what we're doing here. How is the surface of Rix faring here? Uh, we are population capped right now. This is actually a bad thing. Uh, we need to immediately start clearing. Yes, so let's clear. Right, okay. And let's clear. And let's clear. So again, for clearing, you see I'm spending energy, I'm spending minerals, and I'm spending time. All of which I have an abundance of. So I'm good with that. So so we have, uh, due to our mismanagement of Ricks, yes, Big Dave will uh, take some responsibility. Mostly, uh, we will, again, we will blame Gov Ray of, uh, <laughs> for his uh, lack of foresight here in, in uh, clearing out some of these um, blockers because uh, our population is capped here, and that is not a good thing. We also have some upgrades that need to be done. Hold tight right there. Uh, actually, no. Okay, Paseca is 0%. You're going to blow it out of the water. You do it. Do it, Paseca. Get it done. All right. Uh, so, yeah, let's initiate these upgrades. Perfect. All right, we're going to upgrade our power plant to a power plant 2, which is going to mean more energy. And again, we're going to upgrade here. Again, power plant two. We are going to produce one more energy. I like it. I love it. I want some more of it. All right. So let's now check on Smithus. All right. Oh, going well here. Yes, perfect. Perfect. Okay. Uh, we can clear these blockers right now. Let's go ahead and clear them uh, just so that I don't run into the same oversight as I did before. And we've got our pops. Uh, they are growing nicely, growing. And we've got a population of four now with a fifth on the way. Perfect. Okay, and what do we have here? What do we have? Okay, it is a, uh, an abandoned cargo pod. A discarded po cargo pod was left by someone in the upper atmosphere of this planet here long ago. It has somehow escaped the notice of other spacefarers in its decaying orbit means it would have been lost in the gas giant's crushing atmosphere within another few years. The crew of the marksmen unsealed the pod. They found a stash of alien jewelry made out of precious materials. Remarkable, says I, and that's going to give us 187 energy credits. 
perfect. Just a just another uh, simple research project. Paseca knocks it out of the park and uh, immediately goes back to the business of surveying. Perfect. All right, perfect. Okay, so we are now clearing our blockers and we are growing our pop. Um, you know what I think we probably should do here is we probably need to uh, start building some stuff. So we already have two food here. So let's build ourselves a, a hydroponic, a basic hydroponic farm. Yep, that's pretty much the only choice we have. Basic hydroponic farm. Uh, and uh, we have these guys here. Remember, this is going to eventually give us a bonus to the uh, to the adjacent sectors. So we want to uh, build things, probably some of our first buildings, in these adjacent sectors. So why don't we go ahead and start out with uh, how are energy credits? Plus 8, minerals plus 33. Don't need minerals, that's for sure. So let's go ahead and build a basic power plant. Unfortunately, with the basic power plants, uh, with the power plants, um, you have to build the first level power plant if you don't have a capital building and then so on and so forth. So we can build a basic power plant and then upgrade it, but we can't build the upgraded version until we upgrade our uh, reassembled ship shelter into a planetary administration building. We can't do that until we get five pops. So we need five pops. Our fifth pop is growing in right now. So that's, uh, that's great. Oh my God. So many things, so many things. Okay. Research is complete. That's great. Somebody leveled up. Gov Ray. Way to go, Gov Ray. Don't screw up again like you did before with the whole capping the population thing, but otherwise, happy skill up. Okay. All right. The, okay. Okay. All right. Skill up and skill up. Okay. Perfect. Ning and, and, and Zia skilled up. Perfect. All right. So everybody is just skilling up left and right. That is improving their efficiency at their jobs. And efficiency means that I'm spending less time and money and effort on things. And I love that because that stuff then goes into the bank where I save it, hoard it away like a squirrel with his nuts. All right, monthly influence increased. That's exactly what we want. Right now, I don't think we need propaganda because we don't have particularly unhappy pops, but if we did, that would be great to have. And now let's move on. All right, where are we at? I'm starting to get the raspy voice. I've been doing this a little too long right now. Okay, uh, Biolab, again, this is the one. We've talked about it before. It would turn my basic research facility into a society-focused uh, research facility. All right, so we can do the eco uh, simulation, which will unlock farming subsidies, uh, which is an edict which increases food production, which is nice. And it would also give us hydroponic farm two, which would uh, increase the production by one of our hydroponic farms. That's also pretty nice. Uh, colonial centralization, monthly influence plus one, another great one to have. I mean, that plus one, again, there's no other way to increase this that I know of besides these research uh, research tasks. So that's huge when you see these. And to see a second one of these already, really huge. Uh, we can get an edict. That is the uh, production targets, which increases minerals by 15%. Very nice if we need a rush of minerals. I don't think we're going to need that anytime soon, but it's still nice. And a planetary capital, which is an even more upgraded version of the main building on a planet. So there is a lot to think about here. Hydroponic farm two would be nice. More food means more pop. But I, I just can't. I can't pass up this influence, and I also can't pass up the ability to upgrade my uh, my planetary my planetary administration building into a planetary capital. Can't pass that up. Abs absolutely cannot. So there you have it. I didn't pass it up because I couldn't pass it up. And our colony ship is complete. So I think the last thing we're going to do in this episode is send our colony ship on its merry way. We have our science ship, which has gone dormant, but he is going to now start a research regimen up here with the marksman. We are going to dispatch our colony ship to colonize this planet. Oh, this is rough. Okay. Wow. That is clutch. The sinkholes. Oh no, these are deep sinkholes, not colossal sinkholes. I was just about to pat, my, pat myself on the back for having researched that. Oh, that's, that's, that's really bad. That's really bad. Like that is the case, right? That, that's, there's a difference. Well, I definitely can't place a colony there, but can I, am I able to deep sinkhole? Is that what I researched? You know what? We can check. We can check. Uh, tile blockers, deep sinkhole. It is. Okay. So 
that's only that's only that color because I can't put my colony ship there. Okay, I was about to kick myself in the butt for not looking at this planet before we actually decided to colonize it. Okay, colony ship, you're going to colonize this planet, and we're going to put this here. Uh, this is going to be rough at first, but as soon as I clear these two guys, I'm going to start getting bonuses. There really just isn't anywhere I can put it. I don't want to put it on an edge because that's one whole adjacency that I miss out on. Also, if I put it here, I don't yet know how to clear quicksand. I could put it here, maybe, but again, quicksand, I, I, don't, I don't know. Here, I get at least two adjacencies and the potential for two more. Here, I get two adjacencies and the potential for one more. It's a tough call. It, it really is. This is a this is a butthole of a planet with all this crap on it that I can't uh, clear, but uh, we're going to go there. We're going to do that. We're just, I'm just going to... It may be a bad decision. I don't know, but it's it's what's going to happen. There you go. All right, so we've got uh, we've got some hostiles. Space amoebas, okay. Man, oh my goodness, the space amoebas. They have uh, beefed up their uh, offensive capabilities there. Oh my goodness, okay, so we're, we're not going to pick on those space amoebas. Not right now, at least. <laughs> uh, we'll get them later. Okay, so our construction ship is bored because he's done everything he can do for right now. Very soon, though, when our colony is complete, our construction ship is going to have much, much more he can do. So that's great. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Okay, so just as our construction ship starts to uh, starts to run out of steam, something is revealed for him to do. That is what we want. That is what we want. Okay, so where was the alien encounter? Okay, not sure. Here, it was here. Must have been here. Okay, so let's just continue to survey. And let's pause this so we don't have any more catastrophes happening. And uh, I'm hoping that this planet will reach over here. I mean, these two, these are going to try to connect. You know, they'll sort of, my borders will grow together. So I'm hoping that that's going to pull this stuff into, uh, into the fold here. At the very least, it should pull this into the fold. Why has the system not been surveyed? Oh, there was a, there was an enemy in there, right? Okay. Well, we'll, we'll work that out. That's not a concern right now. So yeah, here we are. We have uh, discovered three alien races at this point. Well, one of them discovered us, the uh, Democratic Valdari Union. Uh, but the uh, this side of the galaxy getting a little bit crowded. We're going to have to really start to vie for space and resources over here. But uh, but it's it's welcome. None of these guys seem overtly hostile, even though these guys are militarists. They don't seem overtly hostile at this point. Uh, and so I, th I think we're in a pretty good neighborhood to start. Uh, of course, as soon as I get down here, I might find those damn cat people. But... Um, Otherwise, I think we're doing pretty well. We're doing pretty well. We're continuing to expand. I mean, it, it's it's going pretty darn well. I mean, I'm sure that there's some Stellaris veteran out there that says that knows that I already lost the game three, uh, you know, three space years ago. But um, yeah, I, I'm having a lot of fun, and uh, I'm enjoying sharing this with you guys, uh, even if sometimes I'm just talking to myself. All right, we're colonizing. We are exploring. We are ready for the next episode. All right, guys. I have been Big Dave, and until next time. Take it easy.